Well, good morning. And I say good morning because this is a good morning. And well, of course, unless you're watching in the evening and later is delayed, but have you, then it's a good evening to you. But right now we're live at Germantown Christian Center and we are delighted that you're with us, those of you that are watching us online. A couple quick things. If you're not excited today, then just go ahead and change your attitude, become excited. You're going to get blessed today. You're going to receive a word from God today. God's going to speak into your spirit something that's going to change your life. And you're going to have wisdom that's going to shape the rest of your week. Now, that's my prayer for you. Now, my prayer is ineffective unless you get hooked up with it as well. So right now, where you are, make the decision that that's what you want in your life. When we say this is the day that the Lord hath made, we're supposed to rejoice and be glad in it. That's something we tell ourselves to get ready, get prepared. That's the way we're going to live in the name of Jesus. So in other words, no matter you say, well, I didn't sleep very much. Well, guess what? I understand that. But you can go ahead and choose for just a moment for these next 30 minutes or so and say, you know what? This is the time that the Lord hath made for me. And I'm going to get everything that God has for me in Jesus name. And we're going to get, get blessed. So just get ready, get prepared, get whatever you need to. If you need to get a cup of coffee, if you need to go ahead and get your iPad or whatever else, your Bible out, do that right now. And we're going to pray and believe that God, as I said, is going to speak into your life and is going to change you in Jesus' name. So let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this wonderful day, a day you have most decidedly made for us. And Father, we thank you that all of us, every single one of us, are your prized possessions. We are your children. We love you with all of our hearts. Father, you have made the choice, the difference in our lives, that, that we are changed and transformed. Because of that, Father, we are not the way we used to be. We don't talk the way we used to, that we used to talk. We don't think and believe the way we used to think and believe. Father, we are different because you are a part of our lives. And we are eternally grateful. Father, we thank you that because of that, because of that heritage, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, that which was spilled upon the, the, the cross of Calvary, Father, we have received redemption. We've been bought back from all that, that muck and the mire of our past, and we have been set free in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you and proclaim right now that we are healed, we are whole, we are well, and we are blessed because you are a part of our lives. And, Father, we just stay steadfast, and we thank you for the forgiveness that we have in Jesus. And if there be anybody, Father, whose life needs to, well, they, they need to have a, a forgiveness from you. Perhaps their, their week hasn't gone like they wanted it to go. And maybe they haven't made that choice and decision yet to say, Father, we you forgive me father i pray right now they're just making that simple choice that simple decision to say father forgive me in the name of jesus and father you said in your word in first john 1 9 you would forgive us cleanse us from all the unrighteousness that father you would forget that we did those things and allow our lives to be a blessing to you i pray if there's anybody that father that is in that 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 predicament they extricate themselves right now with the help of your word and Father, we praise you for it because you are good and your mercy endureth forever. We love you. We praise you. And we're believing for just you to speak into our lives. And we thank you for an unction of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And all who agree, say amen. 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 Well, I hope you have something with you that you can look at because we're going to get blessed today. It's an exciting time to be alive. And if you want to go ahead and turn open to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, it'd be a good place to start. Last week, we kind of looked at the area, and thankfully so, it was, a, it was to me a, an inspiration to say how our perseverance matters, how we need to be a someone who perseveres, how our lives need to be a persevering influence, not only in our life, but in the lives of others. And so many times, basically, it means I just don't quit. I just don't give up. But, but... A lot of us can be tempted to do that, can't we? Amen. We either we just give up like, oh, that's too difficult, that's too hard, or maybe you got knocked, knocked down a few times. Maybe you, you just things didn't go your way, and you just kind of like, well, you know, maybe it's not, maybe it's not my turn, maybe it's not my my place, maybe it's just not the destiny that God has for me. And folks, all that stuff needs to be answered by what does the word say to you? Because if you go in your emotions and your feelings and make the determination for what maybe God wants for you by the way you feel, you're going to miss out on a lot of stuff. See, the Bible delineates for us what is the will of God. And, and, and if you don't have knowledge of it, you're at a handicap. You're at a disadvantage. 
And so that's why it's important that as you study the word, and I say study, not just read, but as you study the word, you allow it to make a difference, to be incorporated in your lives, where it influences your thinking and your speech and your actions and your beliefs that we, that we conform them to what God wants for us. And you say, well, I don't feel that way. Forget your feelings. I mean, your feelings change. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, one moment you're the dumps and something happens, a phone rings, uh, something in the mail comes in, you're like, woo! I mean... Really? We're going to let our lives be subject to that type of dramatic swing when we can let the Word do that for us? Why don't we go ahead and say, praise God, look what I just read in the Word. You know, if you're waiting for something to come in the mail, why don't you just believe that God mailed you something here in the Bible? Anyway, excuse me if I get excited. I have a tendency to do that because I, I, kind, of, I, I kind of love Jesus. How about you? Okay, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 20 reminds us something about the, about the person called Moses. And again, he said, he persevered because he saw him who was invisible. Moses persevered because he saw him who was invisible. Obviously, he's talking about God. He's talking about Christ. He saw him who he could not see with the eyes that he was born with. Folks, we need to recognize that what we look at determines who we are and what we do. In other words, if you're constantly focused on a problem, on a situation, if you constantly obsess over things from which there is, there is really no spiritual recourse, you're going to become a person you don't want to be around. We have to focus upon the things that are built from God, that are instituted in our lives because of the Father's love. And in life, sometimes we're looking at things we shouldn't be looking at. The Bible said we're looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Make sure that in all circumstances, you're maybe viewing a circumstance, but I'm not staring at it. I'm not looking at it. I'm not enlarging it. I'm not, I'm not making it, as it were, the center of my life. Jesus and his word is the center of my life. And it's going to change the circumstances that may be confronting me at this moment in time. Amen. Now, again, if you want to get excited, that's okay. If where you are too, that's a good thing. Because this is liberation to you. See, the thing about it is you say, well, this is good preaching. It's better living. And so this is you. This is the will of God for you. And I'm saying this. If Jesus walked by right now and said, you are free. You ought to get excited and say, thank God. Jesus has set me free. Whom the Son sets free is free. I'm free in Jesus' name. And yet we ought to say that this is Jesus coming right by, walking by us. Blind Bartimaeus said there, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He couldn't see Jesus, but he knew he was coming. Folks, we need to know that maybe we don't see him, but we know he's coming. We know he's in us. We know he's near us. We know he's around us. We know the Holy Ghost lives within our lives. What should we do? We ought to rejoice and be excited for anything he's doing in us. And so he says there, because, because he persevered, because he persevered, because he persevered, he was able to be blessed. Folks, I want to be blessed. How about you? He saw him who was invisible. Folks, I will tell you, if you keep looking at Jesus, you'll be able to persevere through the circumstances of your life. Watch what you're looking at. Take heed what you hear. Take heed how you hear it. Take heed the, 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 that, that what you're staring at is something that's going to be something God is pleased with. Focus on that. You say, well, well how else can I persevere in life? Well, last week we kind of built upon some things, but let's build a little farther. Folks, focus on that which God says is yours. Focus on what God says belongs to you. Focus on that reward God's given to you. So, so many times in life we, we feel guilty about looking at a reward. Folks, everyone likes rewards. Don't you? Okay, how many of you like to get rewarded? How many even in kindergarten like those gold stars? You may not have gotten very many, but you sure wanted them. You know, play and work well with others. Some of you might still realize God still gives those out. So get better and do better and you'll, you'll get them, you know. But, but what happens is we want to be rewarded. And God tells us he rewards us. How? Hebrews 10.36. Hebrews 10.36 says that there's a prize for people who persevere, who endure, who don't quit, who don't give up. It says here in, in Hebrews 10.36, you need to persevere so that when you've done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. You think about that wrong. A lot of us just want God to give us what it, what it is that, that he wants to give us without minimal, basically with minimal effort. God says here that you need to persevere. Don't give up. Keep going. Why? Because that way when you've done what God says, you will receive that he has promised. 
In other words, folks, you need to keep going until you get the reward. There's nothing wrong with focusing on the reward. It's okay. Now, mind you, I'm not loving God because of what he gives me, but I'm sure thankful. Maybe you had the same situation. I had great grandparents. And I say I had great. I mean, I had grandparents who were great. Okay? And I loved them tremendously. And it was always exciting because I always knew that they gave great stuff. I mean, they gave great stuff. Maybe you had someone in your life that was the same way. Maybe you watch watching online. You have somebody in your life that you grew up and you knew, whoo, they give good gifts. And you look forward to it because you know whatever they came was not going to be socks and underwear. Well, I knew my grandparents weren't going to buy me socks and underwear. They loved me too much. And so, I mean, I got the neatest things from them, you know? And, and, and they would, I mean, just things. I look back at the time, I think, man, I got this and I got this and I got this and I got this. Great things. And I didn't love them because they gave it to me, but their love was reflected in their gifts. Their love was reflected in their gifts. In other words, I, I knew they loved me and their love just, just, commanded them, moved them to want to give me stuff I really wanted. Folks, God is the same way. God absolutely loves you. I mean, I know it seems bizarre that he is, but he is absolutely enamored and in love with you. Head over heels. He's got it bad. And his gifts, his, his love that he has is just reflected in his gifts. He wants to bless you. He wants to encourage you. He wants to be that person in your life that you just look forward to seeing every day. Because he loves that about you. He just loves you because he made you. And folks, we need to realize that there are rewards to serving God. I said there are rewards to serving God. Here in Hebrews 6.15, it puts it this way. It says, after so patiently waiting, Abraham received what God had promised. Good things do come to those who wait on God. Amen. Good things do come to those who wait on God. In other words, Father, I'm going to let you bring it to pass in my life. I'm not going to force the door open. I'm going to persevere. I'm going to do it your way. I'm not going to get creative in the flesh. I'm going to just go be submitted in the spirit. And I'm going to let you, Father, bring this to pass. God, boy, oh, he, he can do far better than your flesh can. I said, he can do far better than your, than your flesh can. Amen. We have people that, that may be here and those who are watching online have businesses. I got news for you. As much advertising, as much forcing, kicking doors open and creating opportunities in people's lives that you can enter into their lives. I got news for you. It, it, you can do all that, but except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except God be a part of what you're doing. It's not going to stand. It's not going to be as blessed as it could be if God was a part of it. And everything we do, we ought to let God be the center of what we do. The motivation, the reason, the impetus for what we do, the choices we make, the decisions that are made, that God is the center of it. I'm not saying that every choice, every decision is going to be God inspired, but it won't be for our lack of trying. That's what God can bless. That's who God can bless. The person that says, God, I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to miss it, but I, I, it won't be because I wasn't trying. Boy, God gets all over that. I said, God gets all over that. And said here that, that Abraham was blessed because he waited with perseverance. You see, our path to spiritual maturity is going to run through the same determination of not giving up. Folks, I'll tell you, right now we're living in a world that's trying to make you give up. Make you adjust to norms that, that, that basically are just un unusual and unexpected. I'm going to tell you something right now. My faith and trust is in God. Amen. My faith, and I know yours too. Is in who Jesus Christ is, not was, but is today. And so we have to kind of embrace that. That we may be living in a crazy world, but my Jesus is it. Amen. 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 So recognize and realize that there may be restraints upon us, but, but spiritually nothing's changed. We're still the same Christian, blessed, Holy Ghost filled, speaking the word of God. Praying and expecting results to happen. Expecting a miracle, not just once a day, but every time in our lives when we pray. We're expecting God to show up and manifest himself. Amen. Do you understand this? Amen. And we may be having to speak behind a mask, pray behind a mask at times, be in public. I got news for you. This doesn't hide Jesus. The light of Jesus reflects through masks. Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. It's not diminishing who I am. Yeah. I'm not letting anything detract 
from my purpose and mission in life. In other words, the Bible says I'm supposed to go ahead and in every circumstance, in every, in every, in every condition of life, I'm supposed to let Jesus shine. Amen. Some of us just need to get creative. But it's okay because God who is creative in your life can show you the way. And the same thing is in business. God can show you creatively how to allow your business to prosper in the times in which we live, no matter what time it may be. If it's not COVID-19, who knows what's going to be next? Who knows what circumstance of life will be next? Who knows what change or transition is up ahead of us? God does. Start praying and believing now for not just what is going on now, but that which is to come. So that we are prepared spiritually and able to be a blessed person to be blessing others in Jesus' name. Amen. All I'm trying to say is, let's make sure our focus is not on just the immediate today, but let's get our eyes a little farther down the road and keeping them on Jesus to boot. Amen. Amen. Okay, praise God. James chapter 1 verse 4 tells it this way. Perseverance must finish. Everybody say, must finish. Now, those of you watching online, humor me. Say, must finish. Now, here's the reason why. It's not maybe could, maybe should, be a good idea. It says, must finish. In other words, perseverance must finish. King James used the word patience. But perseverance must finish. Notice, what? What must it do? It must finish its work. So, in other words, this is what's going to happen as a result of it, so that you may be mature and complete and you're not lacking anything. Now, I don't know about you, but let's just be frank. That's pretty good. I mean, in the natural, how would you like to have this said about you by God? You are mature. Anybody? Anybody? You are complete. Let I me mean, think about that. No glaring deficiencies. Wow, that'd be nice. You're not lacking anything. How many of you would like to just say, I'm not lacking a thing? Amen. Not lacking a thing. I'm, I'm good. You okay? Oh, I'm straight. I'm good. And it's not a statement of faith. It's a statement of fact. Of truth. Jesus said here, you've got, you've got to have perseverance. In other words, you can't quit. You can't give up. You have to go ahead and say, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm continuing on. The Bible speaks to us about some of these things. And maybe some of you have heard these wonderful sayings. Wisdom in Proverbs is a good thing too. You know? A wicked man will fall seven times, looks to blame somebody else. The righteous falls. You know, I'm sorry, I get that wrong. The wicked falls one time, looks to blame somebody else. The righteous will fall seven times. He looks around and says, well, guess I've got to try an eighth. Guess I've got to go ahead and keep, you know, just, just believe God. It's amazing how we have people that always make excuses. You know? Oh, it's not my fault. I didn't do that. No, it's, it, I didn't, I, I, you know, and you know what, it, it, it's, it's bizarre. Why don't we just say, whoop, I blew that. Praise God. Father, forgive me. Let's try better now. Y'all know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, some, some people are in sales. Maybe some of you watching are in sales. You ever think about it for a moment? I mean, do you have a 100% rate of sale for everybody you call or call upon? Now, that'd be a great, wouldn't that be great if you had a 100% success rate? Everybody you call. Miss Stephanie, you're, you, you, you still sell Mary Kay? Now, you're a really good sales representative or associate for them. But I, I dare say, even with your magnanimous personality and gracious everything about you, you probably don't have a 100% success rate. Does that mean you're a failure? Of course not. But it's amazing how sometimes in life we always want to focus upon the percentage we miss on and not give God thanks for the percentage that we do well. Over the years, I've had the privilege of being able to minister to and know a few sports figures. And there's one particular quality I've learned from just observing a lot of those guys. They remember their losses far more than they do their victories. And I'll tell you something, that, that's hard. Can you imagine if the thing that lives with you more is your losses, not the enjoyment of the victories you've had? Folks, we can't live our lives that way. We ought to be thankful for everything that God does in our lives. And we ought to focus on what God does. 
And when we miss it or we don't do well or something happens, we ought to be able to just say, well, thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Get forgiveness if you need it and keep going on persevering and being able to put those things aside. Shouldn't we? But sometimes in life, we keep beginning those things brought up to us. And that's was the point of the message last week we made mention of. You cannot live successfully in your future if you're constantly reliving your past. Perseverance means you've got to look forward. And I say look forward, it means look ahead, yes, but also means looking forward. Folks, you ought to be looking forward to Monday. And I say, well, that's going to take some faith. Well, okay, praise God. But you ought to be looking forward to Monday. You ought to be looking forward to what's coming next. You ought to be looking forward. Because you know what? God's going to be a part of everything that I do in life. God's got something planned for me. God's got something going on in my life. And if you may call one person, they say, well, I don't want to do it. Well, okay, that's fine. Praise God. Guess what? There's over 6 billion people in this world. Guess what? God's got somebody else out there. One thing I've learned in life, not everybody is going to receive you. And it's okay because not everybody received Jesus. You know, Jesus Christ, God's only begotten son, God himself walked on this earth and he never even had a 100% conversion rate. There were people trying to kill Jesus. Nice thing about it is Jesus knew about it. He just was able to convey himself. He was just walking in the plan of God. People didn't like him. He didn't get deterred by that. He didn't keep obsessing and focusing on those that didn't want him. He kept looking to those he could minister to. Pressing forward. Pressing forward in life, you cannot be so bound by the past and your failures or your, your mistakes that it keeps you in bondage to be able to live for God pressing forward. That's something you got to do by faith. You got to strip it off. Just strip it off. Lay aside every, every thought, everything that would try to exalt itself against and above the knowledge of who God says he is in you and cast it down and say, it shall not be so in my life in Jesus name. You see, we as a believer have to understand this. If we're going to be complete and mature, not lacking anything, we've got to have perseverance. The old, ad, the old adage is, I, 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 I just refuse to accept the answer, no. I may get it from you, but praise God, there's somebody else. I could be ministering Christ to somebody, and they say, I don't want nothing. That's fine, praise God. You know, I hope you, I hope you receive him on this earth. One day you're going to know what I know. I don't get upset. I've ministered to tons of people. Some of them cussed me out. I'm sorry, if you're watching that and don't know what the word cuss means, down south we use that as basically someone that, that profanes and says some ugly words to you. That's a translation for some folks, you know. And they, they, they'll go ahead and cuss you out. You can't be bothered by that. Amen? You know, it's a whole thing. I, I, I've ministered to folks and, you know, told me I don't want Jesus. I said, fine. Keep going. In life, you've got to be able to accept the answer no and not have a bad attitude about it and let it affect what you're doing for God. Amen. Now, if God tells you no, you better listen. Amen. But if man tells you no, you need to seek, well, what does God tell me? Amen. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Over the life of my, my short life on this earth, I've, I've, tell you, I've had plenty of people say, we, we won't do that for you, but I knew it was the will of God. So I just thought, well, then I don't have favor with you. It's okay. I'm going to find someone I do. Right. You must not be the one God has created as, as, a, as a vessel for blessing me. Yeah. See, we get people to get in the flesh, get upset, get in the, get, I mean, absolutely. I, I've, I've, I've seen, I hate to tell you this, I have seen supposed men of God get all up in the flesh. I once saw a pastor take somebody from the scruff because they, they were told something they didn't like. Take, took someone from the scruff of the neck and threatened to beat him up. I looked at that and I thought, that is one unstable man right there. I couldn't believe it. I thought, a minister, pastor. Folks, I've got news for you. If you ever let, let that happen, I mean, you just, just don't, don't let your emotions be subject to wild fluxes like that. Why are you letting yourself get played, as it were, like that? I'm going to think about it. I love, I love the fact that you just know I heard from God. If I heard from God, God's going to make a way. If it's not through you. It'll be through somebody else. Great examples throughout life is that way. And I'm sure you've got them in your life, don't you? How God made a way for you. 
Somebody said, oh, you'll not amount. You can't do. You won't be able to. And yet God says, hey, but wait. Let me do it for you. And he did, didn't you? We all have those stories. Why don't you rehearse some of those in your mind? Why don't you think about how good God was to you in areas like that and think that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And as he was, so is he. And if he did it back then, he'll do it again today. Why don't you thank him for that? Why don't you sometimes just put your hands up to God and begin to thank him for who he is and what he did and how he's the same and he hadn't changed. So when you're facing some difficulty, remind yourself, I'm persevering because as God was faithful, so is he faithful. People of the old in the Bible did it. David himself did. You know this. He looked back through time and said, my word, I've got Goliath before me, but who did I have before me? Well, God was faithful with the bear. He was faithful with the lion. And why can't he be faithful here? Sometimes we need to reflect back on how faithful God has been instead of centering upon our failures. The times we missed it. Folks, it's you, not God. It was you that missed it. Get a hold of what God has for you. Get a hold of his plan. And guess what? It, it, it'll come to pass. I said, it will come to pass. He says here, and thank God, and I'm glad that, that Jesus loves people who endure. How? Revelation 2 2 puts it this way I know your deeds. I know your deeds. Some people preach that in the negative. Ooh, I know what you've done. Wait till your dad gets home, you know. He says, I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I love the fact God knows your deeds, he knows your hard work, and he loves and, and knows your perseverance. You know, well, guess what? Understand some of us have been knocked off stride by things we didn't see coming our way. But you know what? God has it. God full well knows everything that's coming our way. Aren't you glad? Hebrews 12 puts it this way, and I think it's kind of encouraged there in verse 12. It says there that, that, that we are told that we should strengthen ourselves, even our feeble arms and our weak knees. One translation put it that way. Understand you're human. Understand you've got frailties, but understand God doesn't. Understand greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. Understand that what you can do by yourself is nothing compared to what God can do in and through you. So why don't you just tell him right now, you're in me. You're working with me. I'm for you, you're for me, and we're going to do something great together in Jesus' name. Remind yourself, you're a co-laborer together with him. Only, only when you forget his benefit, his assets that are available to you, do you find yourself inadequate and inferior. If you know and you remind yourself of how great he is, I got news for you. Huh, you're going to walk around like you are something because you really are with him. Does that make sense? Fine, I, I want to leave you with a story that maybe you might have, if you remember history and things like that. I, I, I don't really remember watching it, but I remember the story. Back in Mexico City, there was an Olympics, I think it was in 1968. And there was a, a runner, as it were, I think he was from like South Africa. And uh, he was a marathon runner. And I don't know, about halfway through the race or so, there was a big... Uh, a group of people that were running and there was a tussle and he ended up falling and hurt his badly hurt his shoulder badly and I think he dislocated actually a dislocation knee and he was down on the ground and and, and I mean the, the, they were the doctors were going to run up and he he and he he got up and on a dislocated knee and I don't know if you know a dislocated means the knee is out of place a shoulder that is badly hurt excruciating pain he's only about halfway through the race. And he is hobbling and running best he can where he sees the other runners now way up ahead. Now fast forward. I think the winning person came through was a little over two hours. About three hours into it now they're beginning to have the medal ceremony awarding the, the medals. And all of a sudden you start hearing some cheers and crowds start roaring. And here is this guy entering the stadium. And people start cheering. I mean, can you imagine? Dislocated knee, excruciating pain, agony, tears running down his face. Every step is an absolute, just an agony. And he's limping his way around the track to come around and, and be able to finish. Now, he finished. He finished the race. He came in dead last. 
And the thing that got me was the reporters immediately, they went, I mean, they stopped the marriage ceremony. I mean, this was it. And they, and they, they asked him, why did you keep running? Why didn't you quit? He said, my country did not send me 5,000 miles from home to quit. And I think, wow. But he had every reason to quit. He wasn't going to finish first. He wasn't going to get a medal. He was going to finish last. But in his mind, I didn't come to this to quit. And he finished last. He became throughout history. Throughout, I mean, it's amazing how they, they, they bring this gentleman out. He became an ambassador for the sport in his nation. He's, at several Olympics, they have him be a torchbearer. That, that they've, because his perseverance was the Olympic spirit. Wasn't doing it because he could win. He was doing it because that was what was, what was in him. I'm going to tell you something right now. In life, every one of us as believers have that in us. Are we going to let it out of us? We can come up with every excuse, every reason why we ought to just quit sometimes. But we ought to say, my God didn't send me and put me in this body on this earth to quit. He called me to run my race with perseverance and to finish. How about you? I said, how about you? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much. We thank you, Father, that there is a spirit within us. Your Holy Spirit. That reminds us, that, that confirms in our hearts that we are your children. And that, Father, we have potential that just far exceeds what we even think is possible. But as we see our place with you and your place in us, Father, we are just so encouraged that what we read in the Bible is for us. It's encouragement to us. It's a, it's a handbook, a manual for what we ought to be doing and what we can do because you're going to help us. Father, I pray right now for every person here in this building and those that are watching online that, Father, they have a race before them and some have fallen. Some are in pain. Some have got hurts. Some self-inflicted and some others have inflicted. And yet as, as they're there, they have a choice and a decision. Are they going to get up? And are they going to keep running? Father, I pray and I ask that you would help and encourage each and every individual, every single person listening to this, hearing this, and let them know that you love them desperately and that you're there for them and that you'll help them. You'll help them finish. You'll heal their bodies. You'll heal the hurts. You'll take away that, 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 that bitterness. You'll forgive it if, if, if only asked. You'll take that away, Father, and in its place, Bring inspiration. Father, bring a, just a flooding of your love and of your power in their lives, reminding them of the greatness that's inside because of your great love. Father, we thank you for it. I praise you, Father, for it because you are a God of more than enough, more than we even know, more than we can think or ask you're able to do, and we thank you for it. And, Father, if there be anyone who has a malady in their body, a condition that, Father, that they need help, they need a healing. Father, I pray with them right now. And I ask them just to place their own hand upon their own body somewhere. Because the Bible said these are the signs in Mark 16. These are signs that follow those that believe. And one of them was, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, Heavenly Father, I thank you right now in Jesus' name. That every individual who has their hand upon their body or, a, or the body of someone else that's, that's close to them, that someone that, that's there with them. I speak life and health into their bodies and I command in the name of Jesus that they be made whole by the power 
of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father. They are healed, whole, and they are well, and they are blessed to the glory of God the Father. And I praise you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you that if there's anyone here that has not accepted Christ, has heard this message, and they would like to. Right now, where you are, just ask Jesus into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life and save me. I need you. Fill me with your spirit. If you'll pray that prayer, God will do what he says. He'll move into your life. He'll become your roommate. And he'll live with you forever. And he will do all these things we talked about today. Father, we praise you. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, for those of you that are joining us online, I will give you an opportunity to, to be a blessing to this church, this ministry. And on the screen, I know there's certain things, and I'm sure you've seen it. If you would pray, consider, and act on it, we would say thank you. It's a way that you could bless this ministry for the outreach that we have and be able to expand it in other areas as well. And so if you would... Just lay have it on your heart to, to send us a, a financial gift. There are electronic means available. There's also, of course, the, you can mail it to us. We'd say thank you. We'll, we are faithful over it, and we will count it a privilege and an honor to, to be a partner with you in this endeavor. So if you would just, uh, you know, go ahead and take that step of faith and reach out to us, we would say thank you. Well, I, I'll just remind you again, God loves you. Don't let your past stop you from a success in your future. Take this word that you've heard and apply it to your life. And whatever spoke to you, whatever ministered to you, take hold of that and just don't let it go. Don't let, don't let something get in the way of it. Start enacting it in your life today and in the coming days ahead. Because understand and know, God's got a great plan for you. He's got a great plan for your life. He's got a great plan for your family. He's got a plan for your business. Don't let anything or anyone tell you differently. God is for you. And I know you're for him too. So if you'd like to join us again next week, next, next Sunday morning at 1030 Central Time, we'll be here. But we'll also be here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock Central. We have a, a Bible study that we're going to delve into the Word and be an encouragement to you. So if it fits into your schedule, you can watch it live. Or of course, you can watch it later. You can like us on Facebook, Germantown Christian Center. Um, you can also like us and go to YouTube. These broadcasts are streamed and put on our YouTube channel. And that's Germantown Christian Center. And that's, again, on our YouTube channel. Well, until next time, I'm praying for you. Drop us a note. Send me an email. Let me know these broadcasts are a blessing to you. It means a lot to me. And uh, for that, I'll say, until then, may God's richest and best be yours. And we're believing God that he's going to do a great work in you this week. So go ahead and let him do it. God bless you. See you real soon. Bye-bye.